Amen. I welcome you in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be blessed. Amen. May the Lord meet you, Amen. and empower you, Amen. and strengthen you. Amen. As you are in His presence, today He has come here with a message. And the message says that we should come to Him, and He will give us peace. Amen. We should come to Him, and He will give us peace. I pray that your household will be a camp with God's fire. Amen. I pray that your household, God will protect you. Amen. I pray that God will order your steps Amen. into righteousness, Amen. into favor, Amen. and into opportunity. Amen. As you have come as yourself, my prayer that you will not leave here as you came. Amen. May the Spirit of God meet you at the point of your desire. Amen. And may you be blessed by His word. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Matthew. God bless you. Amen. Our time is well spent, so I want to continue. So we can run up on time so that the Spirit of God can also deliver to us all that He has for us. Amen. Amen. I believe we are all there on the book of Matthew, chapter 11, 28 to 30. May God give you understanding to his word. Amen. And may you be blessed Amen. abundantly. Amen. As you hear his word. Amen. 28. Matthew 11. I'll read from 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Somebody say rest. Rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For I am gentle and humbled in heart and you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come to me, all who are weary, my people. What is weary? Weary, brothers and sisters, is when you are facing uncertainty. When you are going through challenges and difficulties that you don't even know how to handle it by yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord said, we should come to him with our problems. That is what it means. We should come to him with our challenges. In God, he said, Mulik And when we come to him with it, he will give us what? Rest. Say, yes, the Lord. He said, don't take your problem to the people that won't solve it for you or won't help you to solve it. But come with your problem and communicate with God about your problems. Through what? Prayer. And the Lord said, I will give you rest. The rest that you cannot find anywhere in this world. Come to God with your burden. I don't know what you are going through in life, but I know what I am facing in life. All that I am facing is that we are living in a world that is full of evil. Full of evil. We are living in a world that people believe that even organ vaccination is antichrist. We are living in a world that people don't believe in anything that is good. The world is full of doubt and chaos and uncertainty. As I'm talking standing here, even a country called Ukraine and Russia is even about to go to war. In this 20th century, we are living in uncertainty time. And God said, the world out there cannot help us. But we should come to him. And when we come to him with our problems, he will find solution for us. Somebody say amen. amen. He will find solution for us. So come with your problems, your challenges. No matter how big it is. No matter how small it is, there is nothing that is too difficult for God to solve. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You know where the rest is talking about? That our soul may 
may find rest. When your soul don't have rest, you get panic at any given time of our life. We should come to him with our problems. When we break it, that is upon you that you don't know how to solve it. That God may save you and deliver you from. Praise the Lord. Say yes, the Lord. He said, take my yoke upon you. What does it mean? It simply means that stand for what Jesus stood for. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Take my yoke upon yourself. When you come to God with your problems, say, take my yoke upon yourself. Stand for what Jesus stood for. What did Jesus stood for? He stood for what is right. And he rejected what is evil. Praise the Lord. He said, when you take his yoke upon yourself, know that, and he said, we should learn from him, which is, we cannot be as perfect as Christ. Let's be honest, brothers and sisters. We cannot be perfect as Christ. We are all have our challenges, our difficulties in life. So that we do our best even to walk in the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. He said, do not allow your problems and your worries to hinder you from God. Mm -hmm. For it is the enemy's strategy. Mm -hmm. He said, come to me. There is peace in my hands. Oh, there is rest in my hands. Mm -hmm. Come to me as yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, brothers and sisters, the reason why some people cannot find the touch of God, mm -hmm. you know the reason? Mm -hmm. There are people who come to God mm -hmm. as themselves. They come to God, but there is another max on them. Mm -hmm. In the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. when Adam and Eve disobeyed against God, when they eat the forbidden fruit, what did they do? The first thing they did, they ran. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they did what they hid. According to the Bible, they covered themselves with what? Leaves. Yeah. Why were they hiding? Why were they hiding? They were hiding because of sin. Amen. Amen. They were hiding because of sin. The sin that they committed made them feel shame. You see why some Christians are hiding? They are hiding because they see themselves that they are not worthy to come before God. But God said, tell my people, it's a wrong mindset. Even though they were hiding, God still called Adam. And it's so frightening. So God said, tell my people who are hiding, that you stop hiding and come to me. Amen. And I will give them peace and rest. Amen. The peace that they cannot find in this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I will give them peace and rest and their soul will be filled with love and kindness and passion. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Say yes the Lord. So they went through healing because of the sin they committed. So when God was calling Adam, he asked Adam, why are you running? Did you have me call? He said, I heard your voice. But I was naked. And God asked Adam, how do you know that you were naked? He said, the sin made them to realize that. They were naked. But before, they had a very good relationship with their father, their God, who made them in his own image. God made them special. Somebody say, I am special. I am special. Say, call your name. Say, I, Pastor Collins, I am special. We are specially made by God. They went here because of sin. Sin drives them out of God's presence. Sin chases us out of the people of God. Amen. They said to God, Adam said, I am naked. Adam used to communicate with the animals in the Garden of Eden. He used to enjoy God's presence. That is how it was. We used to enjoy God's presence. So they went hiding 
from the same God that created them. So when you put something on yourself that is not really you, which one should God touch? Should he touch the mask or you, the person itself? So now you understand when I say, people come to God not by themselves. God is seeing you there, but he said, my daughter, my son, I can't reach out to you. I can't touch you with my spirit. Take situation around because it's not really you who is sitting. There's another person. Until the mask is removed. Until the leaves they used to cover themselves was removed. Before God covered them. See the revelation behind it. Until we come to God as ourselves without hiding from Him, He would touch us. He would touch us with His power. And when God, you feel the touch of God, things change in your life. Oh, yes. Yes. When you feel the touch of God, there is transformation of deliverance take place in our life. Amen. Amen. The touch of God brings opening door. You will feel it and you know that I have felt God in my heart. I have felt God in my heart. And when you feel God in your heart, my people, nobody will tell you that when you're in the presence of God, you will tell them, I felt God's presence. Yes, yes. They may not understand you. Yeah. But you know what you felt in your heart. Yes. And because of what you felt in your heart, it brings you what? Peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It brings you what? Peace. Yes. Oh, yes. And that is where say, your soul shall find Rest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your soul may find rest in the bosom of the Almighty God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So when the mask is removed, that is when God can bless you. Just like Joshua the high priest. It is even Satan that complained to the angel that, wait till this man you are about to bless with God's blessing. There is a seed upon him. He was wearing a beauty garment. God wants to bless us. Amen. Amen. God wants to turn our circumstances around. God wants to bring a great transformation in our life. He said, be yourself from your heart. Soul and spirit, and he may give you peace. 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 And the peace that you will get, my people, things in this world will no longer disturb your mind. The uncertainty in this world will no, will no longer worry you. Your worry will become like it is no longer important. Thank you. Your burden, you feel like, oh, this burden, the Lord has taken it away. Because you feel the peace and the touch of God in your life. Amen. Is it come to him? Ask yourself. Don't cover yourself like Adam and Eve did. Until the list was removed, that is where God was able to touch and cover them. He wants to be the one to cover you. With his wings. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. With his wings. Amen. And say, take his yoke upon yourself. Amen. Amen. What is the yoke of Christ? The yoke of Christ, my people, is standing for what Christ stood for. Christ stood for righteousness. Christ stood for kindness. And Christ stood for goodness. Praise the Lord. Take my yoke upon you. Amen. Amen. And when you take the yoke of Christ upon you, you will know that Christ is gentle. Is gentle. Is gentle. So taking the yoke of Christ upon you, you say, stand for what Christ stood for. What is wrong is wrong. And what is good is good. Defend what is good.
understood that Christ may continue to walk in your life and defend you and defend the rest of your family. That is how you take the yoke of Christ upon you. By being like Christ, Christ like it. Praise the Lord. I said we cannot be perfect like Christ, but we can be Christ like it. Amen. And be like Christ. He said what? Be gentle. Amen. Be what? Be gentle. Because Christ is gentle. He said be gentle. And be what? Humble. Is he God? That is how you take the yoke of Christ upon you. So you see, it is very difficult and very challenging to see a true Christian A true Christian possess such qualities. A true Christian possess the spirit of what? Humbleness and gentle spirit in heart. A true Christian who is walking in the steps of Christ. You cannot be as Christ, perfect as Christ, but you are doing your best to walk as Christ. Praise the Lord. They always were humble in heart. And they are gentle. Praise the Lord. That is why sometimes eh, when someone says it's a believer and I don't see humbleness in them, I know that you are not serving the same God I'm serving. You see, Christians, sometimes we find ourselves by very important things. And these two things, three things are humbleness, gentleness. That is who our Father Christ Jesus is. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is who our Christ Jesus is. Be gentle. Amen. In heart. Yes. Be gentle. In mind. In mind. And humbled. Praise the Lord. And humbled. That is the quality. Let the boy sit down. Moving up and down. It's not right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To be humble in spirit is doing what is right. That is who Christ is. The Holy Spirit is gentle. Yeah. You feel it when you are calm in your spirit. It's true. It's true. That is why when I'm in the prayer, I don't want distraction. Mm -hmm. It's the evil spirit that causes those things. A person who is humble in spirit is very sensitive. What is sensitive? Having the spirit to know the plight of other people's pain. Mm -hmm. Amen. And understanding why the person is saying what he's saying. Mm -hmm. When you have a humble spirit. That is who Jesus is. Yeah. Jesus understood that the woman that he is about to stone to death, the people who are about to stone him, they themselves are not righteous. The one who is condemning somebody is not righteous. But when you don't have the spirit of God in you, you train other people to condemn other people. It's yeah. not good. Amen. Amen. It's true. It's true. So when somebody tells you he's a Christian and you don't see gentleness, you don't see humbleness in them, you stay in the very well. A true Christian that walking in the ways of God, they have a pure heart. They are humble in spirit. They are gentle in heart. They are very sensitive in other people. The things that they don't like other people to say to them, they will never say it to you. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Yeah. They will never say it to you. They, are, they possess the quality of Jesus. Amen. 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 So that is how you take the yoke of Christ upon you. Yeah. By being like Christ, gentle. Amen. For the Bible says, God resists what? The proud. The proud. By giving grace what? Oh. To the humble. Hallelujah. If you go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 6, somebody go there please. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And I 
I'll reign with you. Amen. Amen. Six, seven, and eight. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Five. Yes, go ahead. Verse six, seven, and eight. He said, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Amen. That he may lift you up in due time. Please, you may wait. Amen. We should humble ourselves, therefore, under God's what? mighty hand. So that he may what? Lift us up in due time. That is Christ like it. There is no contradiction here. And verse 7, what did he say? It said, cast all your anxiety on him, for he cared for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what, when you take the yoke of Christ upon you, it said, cast them all your anxiety on the Lord. Anxiety is what fear. Anxiety is uncertainty. It said, cast it onto the Lord. Don't present it to the people who cannot give you solution to it. That is what he means. Come to the Lord. And when you come to the Lord, cast your anxiety onto him. And when you cast your anxiety onto the Lord, he will take care of you. And in verse 8, it said, Be alert and sober what? Minded. Because your enemy the devil prowls around roaming like what? A roaming lion. Looking for someone what? To devour. Praise the Lord. Now when you look at it very well, brothers and sisters, thank you, God bless you, woman of God. When you look at it very well, in the best it says, be alert and of sober what? Mind. That is God. Be patient with your fellow brothers and sisters. What you don't understand, be patient. So that God may give you understanding to it. So that you don't jump into what conclusion that later you regret of what have I said. And say, be alert and sober what minded. Because the enemy is watching us. So God is also what? Watching us. He prowls around roaming and looking for someone what? To devour. Means to destroy. We don't pray to God and at the end of the day, the enemy destroys us. No. But we pray to God that he may prevent evil out of our life. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, when you come to God, cast your anxiety onto him. He said, my job is so what? It's so heavy. It is very heavy for the one that has a spirit that is not humbled. But the spirit that is humbled, they are always calm and they are always what? Sober minded when it comes to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sober-minded. Because of your humble spirit. Because of what your humble spirit. God also leads you not into evil, but into what righteousness. Because of your humble heart. He brings people who are also humble like you, closer to you. Because of your sober-minded. He will bring people who also have sober mind like you. So the light leads you to the light. And darkness leads you to darkness. So the humble spirit, the spirit of God leads you to light. Because he said, you shall find rest. And my burden is not heavy. But it's what? It's light. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. So he said, the things that we cannot handle, cast it onto God. Cast your anxiety. All your worries onto the Almighty God. All your difficulties onto God, and He will care for you. Amen. Amen. The challenge, your difficulties, what you are facing in life, God knows it. 
The book of Proverbs chapter 2, 15, verse 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Keeping watch on the wicked and the good. God sees behind and God sees ahead. He will bring everything in this world or to judgment. Even the secret things. Good or bad, it will bring everything to judgment. Which is the eyes of the Lord is watching you, the eyes of the Lord is watching me. It's everywhere. He knows behind me and he knows ahead of me. Hallelujah. That is why it's good to cast your anxiety onto God. Yes. For he knows how to save me and you from the problems and the challenges and the difficulties that confront us in life. Praise the Lord. He said, nothing is hidden before God. Nothing is hidden before God. He knows ahead. And he knows behind. And he said, he will bring everything onto a judgment. So don't go and do it by yourself and fall into the same mistake again. Praise the Lord. He said, right now he talk to God. Bring your burden unto me. And when you come, don't be shy to speak out to God. That is what they talk about imperfection. When you accept your imperfection, it means that you accept that you have difficulties that you need God to help you. Amen. 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 Should I repeat it? When you accept your imperfection, which is you admit that God, this is my problem. I cannot do it by myself. God, help me. God, deliver me. God, set me free. God, deliver me from the attack of my enemies. This is my problems. You embrace your difficulties, which is you came to God with the truth. And God will meet you with what? With the truth. With your heart will forget. Amen. God will also meet you with the truth. I said to the true, you show yourself what? To the devious, you show yourself what? But to the kind, he will show himself. To the lovely, he will show himself lovely. That is how God is. My people, this is not hard. His burden is not hard. It's not hard to stand for what is right. It is not difficult to speak for what is good. It is not hard to advocate what is kind. It is only hard when your heart is heavy and proud and arrogant. That's why God said, I resist my spirit. Because that is the spirit that has not allowed us sometimes to receive fully from God. No, it's true. It's true. That's not allow us to receive fully from God. And the things that allow us to receive fully from God is that when we are humble in spirit, mm -hmm. hallelujah, Amen. when we are humble in spirit, mm -hmm. when we are gentle like Jesus, our heart will not be heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Your problems will be taken care of by the Lord. That is why I say, bring it to me. And when you come to him, speak about it in communication through prayer. Amen. Amen. It's a lovely God. And it's a kind God. When you know him, you will enjoy the Lord very well. When you know him, you will not suffer. That is where you know how to speak with God in your prayer. A Christian that accepts prayer in him or her life, him or her life, which is you have not accepted God yet. Then can you walk as Christ? No, no, we should. You know, Christ said we should pray. Yeah. And pray without what? Without season. Thank you. Yeah. It says be like Christ like. He said, I will give you rest. But you don't understand, you are not getting the rest. You do some part, you don't do some part. And God said, I know ahead. So if he know ahead, then which is he know the secret of my blessing. Then I need to what? Tell him everything so that he may also help me with everything. Help me with everything. It is not hard. Is it, is it, is it complicated? Is it complicated? No. 
It is very easy. It is very easy. When you tell him everything, he will also help you with everything. That is God. He knows all things. When you read the book of James chapter 3 verse 2, it says sometimes we all stumble in life in many ways. We all, we all make mistakes. But the ability to admit that this is my mistake, God, help me with it. God will meet you on your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I find it difficult to accept my problems, God cannot help me. I will continue to be praying, but my prayer will not get breakthrough. Amen. Amen. God loves us. He made us in his own image. Yeah. Specially made in his own image. Yeah. It's a 2022. Don't fight it by yourself. Hello? Hi. 2022. Don't fight it by yourself. Bring your burden to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring your weariness to God. And as I read 1 Peter 5, 6, 7, say, cast it unto God, your anxiety. Cast it unto God. He said, for he came for you. He will see you through. He will not let you fall when you trust in the Lord. How do you gain trust in God? It's by spending time in the word of God. Uh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. This is how we gain trust in God. Yeah. And have faith. It's by spending time with God. Yeah. And how do we spend time with God? It's as we have gathered. May His Spirit dwell within us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. As we have gathered, may His Spirit come upon us. As we have gathered, may he hear our prayer. Amen. Spending time with God is a treasure. Yeah. That when you have it, no spirit can take it away from you. No. Hallelujah. He said, come to me with your burden. Amen. Come to me with your worriness. Mm. Behold, I stand and open my hands receive you. Hallelujah. Come as yourself. Hallelujah. Don't hide because I know behind and I know ahead. Hallelujah. Speak out with open heart Amen. and I will meet you with open heart. Hallelujah. Speak out with sincere heart and I will meet you also with a sincere heart. Speak out with a gentle spirit. And I, God, will meet you also with a gentle spirit. Amen. Speak out when it's right. Speak out when it's wrong. Speak out. Amen. That is how you take the yoke of Christ upon you. By being gentle. By watching what you say to the sister and to the brother. If you don't feel good with you, Means it do not feel good with the sister. Yeah. They don't say it. Mm. Don't say it. Mm. I don't have much more to tell you than to tell you that God said, come to him. Come to him. Mm. Ask yourself. Don't hide. Yes. But God knows who is hiding. Mm. And God knows who don't hide. No. Those who hide from God, they can't feel free by themselves when they're in the house of God. I see things. Those who hide from God, when they are in the house of God, they, they sometimes, it's like they are fighting to fit in. But those who come to God as themselves, when they are in the house of God, they don't, it's like, even though they are a stranger, it's like they have been there before. It's like they have been there before. Don't you think God sees it? That's what they say, I see ahead and I see behind. 
People are not passionate again about God. Even to clap my people is becoming difficult. Yes, Amen. Amen. People are not passionate again about God. They must say passionate about God. They are praying by the account of their prayer. They are praying by their, they want to make their voice don't come out. Prayer is like a fight. You fight with a spirit. It's a lady I spoke with last week. And he said, Pastor, I want you to explain to me the meaning of spiritual wife and spiritual husband. <laughs> and I said, are you sure? Are you okay? He looked at me and she was like, she had to say something but she kept quiet. And said she wanted to know what it is. And I said, I will explain to you. <laughs> that any time a demon, those spiritual, when they make love with you, their blood is left in your body. Yeah, sure. Spiritual wife. Or spiritual husband. When it's a man, you make love with a woman, he leaves his blood, that demon leaves his blood in you. Yeah. And he takes your blood also to the evil world. Yeah. What does it mean? I'm explaining to her. Which is anything that is good on earth, you will not get it. Mm -hmm. Even though you get it, it will not last. Don't take it. Mm -hmm. To get married, really get married on earth, they will not let it happen. Mm -hmm. Because they see to themselves that you are already married to them yeah. in the evil world. Yeah. Praise the Lord. That is a fact. Yeah. Every human being expresses it. Only to those that have filled with the Spirit of God, fight with your prayer to resist it. Yes. So when they come to you in the night and your spirit resists it in the wrong of the Spirit, the next time they will not come. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Those marine spirits, they are demons. So when it's happening, the woman or the man begin to enjoy it. Along the line, they think that you like what is happening. They will take you out of the earth yeah. by killing you with us or, 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 or terminal death. Yeah. Okay. It happens to young women and young men. Everyone. They always come, even to men of God, as I'm standing here, they come after me sometimes. Yeah. But my spirit rejected in the wrong the spirit. Yeah. They cannot take authority over your life. Yeah. Because anytime that demon makes love with you, I said they are taking your blood to the evil world. And they will leave their own blood in you. When they leave their blood in you, that is a bad luck. You marry your physical, you will not let it happen. Until that case is broken. So when I was explaining to the sister, she started crying. She said, Sure, that lady, she started crying. And I said, Why are you crying? He said, She's going through these problems. I said that she felt ashamed to talk about it. And I said, Sister Lily. Don't be ashamed. No. That is what God means. And when we come to him, we should come to him as ourself. And he said, how can she be free? And, and she said something that I felt sad for her. I felt sad for her. That is December. 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 She was supposed to get married. Huh. And the person she was supposed to get married to, the day of the marriage, the man called and said, I've changed my mind. Just like that. Mm -hmm. The man did not get married to another woman. No, he said, he changed his mind. He said, that thing led her almost, be she became sick. And I said, that's why I've not seen you a while from work. And you're telling me that it's Corona. It was not Corona. He said, she had to look for something to say. So she can say, oh, but she opened up to me because she find out that one of her friends is now coming to the church. That is a man. Mm -hmm. Also a colleague at work. Mm -hmm. And the lady has been talking to her. That's why she decided to open up. Mm -hmm. I said, my dear, God can set you free. Yeah. But you need to tell God your problems. He knows it. God knows our problem. Mm -hmm. But I see what has to talk about it. That is what makes God so amazing sometimes. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And I asked myself, why did you want me to talk about it? So they want to see the seriousness of your, your problems. Yeah. How serious you take it. So I told her that she needs deliverance. And she needs to be prayerful. And when she's being delivered, she has to be prayerful. So when they come in the night, your prayer will prevent them. Or else, what has happened will continue to happen and happen. And that is not only her, there are many in the world that goes through these things. 
And that is what God is calling us for today. I'm running up. That is what God is calling us. So when they say come to God, they say, come to God so that you can pray. And He can set you free from your heavy burden. Amen. It's a burden. It's a burden that we can't handle it. I can't fight the spiritual things if I cannot have control of it. Until the Lord gives you insight and understanding that you can be able to fight them. You know, so when I come, when, when we come to church, we are not in control. I am not in control. Sister, brothers, you are not in control when you are in the house of God. The person that is in control is God. I'm not in control either. It's God is in control over my life. I know I'm in charge of the church, but I am not in control of the things of the spirit. It's God that is in control of the things of the spirit. He said, come to him. Ask yourself so that he may deliver you from any spirit that, that is hindering you and your success and your progress in life. Say, come to him. Let your heart be opened. God knows what is hidden that you can't talk about. He knows it. But when you communicate it with God in tears, in tears, I'm telling you, the yoke shall be broken. The yoke shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Sometimes there are family cases. Family cases that you don't know nothing about. You don't have anything to do about it. What your mother did or your father even put you into, you don't know and you have no clue. But that spirit is tormenting you and is causing you a lot of problems in your life. God said, come to him with this. That is what he means. Come to me, all he that are weary and heavily burdened. Come to him with your spiritual problems. And he will break that curse. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come to him with the marital challenges. And you will break that curse. Come to him with your fears. And he will give you rest Amen. and peace. Lift up your hand and give glory to, glory to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Give glory to the Lord thy God. The King of Kings. The mighty one in battle. And they say, who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. The strong in battle. He is the King of glory. Lift up your hands to him, my people, wherever you are. And communicate to him with your burden. Talk to him about your burden and your worriness. Communicate to God in prayer. And say, cast your burden, cast your anxiety unto the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth. Communicate to God with your anxiety, your fears, your certain things. That is, is bringing a lot of weight and pain into your life. That God may set you free. Let your heart be lifted to God. Let your hands be lifted to all ye gates. That the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty. The Lord strong in battle. He is the King of glory. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to plant a seed of gentleness, humbleness, peace, that you may find rest every area and every aspect of your life. The Spirit of God is here. For he has anointed us to preach the good news to the poor, to the thirsty, to the hungry, and to the helpless. And to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing too hard for God to do. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords. The Lord is our light and our salvation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be what. He restored me. 
and he leadeth me to the path of righteousness. He said, Ye though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we should fear no evil. For thou art with us. Our cup shall run it over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Nothing is too hard for God to do for you. Take a moment and talk to God. Take a moment and ask God to come into your life. Take a moment and commit your burden into God's hands, your weariness, your uncertainty into God's hands. He cares for you and he will set you free. And your life will never remain the same. Your life will never remain the same. It's here to receive you. It's here to set you free. That is why he said in the book of First Peter chapter 5 from verse 6. He said, humble yourself therefore before God. That he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety unto the Lord. Be alert and of sober mind. For the enemy, the devil, prowls around looking for whom to devour. May you not be a target to the enemy's destruction. May your family not be a target to the enemy's destruction. God bless you. God bless you. As you pray to God, may he receive you. May he set you free. May he cleanse you. May he build a pillar of fire around you and your household. May the chains of oppression be broken in the name of Jesus. May the chains of oppression be uprooted in the name of Jesus. May he arise. May he arise and set you free. Put your hands together for Jesus. Father, we thank you once again for today. He said we should come unto you, God, with our burden, with our weariness. And you, God, shall give us rest and peace. I pray, Lord, for your hand, your righteous hand, to rest upon your people. Let every yoke of oppression in your life be broken. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Let every burden in your life be uplifted. Let it be uplifted up back to the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My God, let the door be opened on behalf of your children. Amen. Let the door of peace and righteousness be opened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My God, I pray that your hand will never depart away from your children. Amen. In the realm of the spirit, any spirit wife, spirit husband against the life of your children, I send fire to consume them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. deliver your children Amen. from the powers of darkness, Amen. from the forces of evil. Amen. Set them free, God, Amen. from a sexual spirit. Amen. Generation curses. Amen. I consume them with fire. Amen. I consume them with fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. may God deliver you, Amen. set you free. Amen. As you lift up your voice yes, and your hands unto Him. Yes, May he receive you. Amen. May the Lord receive you. Amen. May the Lord receive you. Amen. May the Lord receive you. Amen. That your soul may find rest. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen.